This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hello, welcome to Quad Talk. I'm Crystal here this Monday morning. So I have a load for you today, and this is a mother load. How's that? Well, motherhood encompasses so much, yeah? I mean, there's the mess, there's the beauty, there's the pain, the pleasure, and the uncontrollability, and the unexpected, and anything you wanted to try to contain, it's just out of your control. And so we're gonna talk about these and celebrate the beauty of this mess in a loving way uh, with two dancers and mothers and their gorgeous children. And men, if you think this has nothing to do with you, don't you dare, like, go away because you guys made babies too, right? I mean, this is all part of uh, life, and we're going to celebrate motherhood like um, in like more ways than we should, if you know what I mean. Anyway, welcome to Quack Talk, and I'm going to introduce my two wonderful okay. guests today. Next to me, we have Gwen Arbaugh. Uh, you are the originator of the Mama Ensemble, is that right? Oh, I'm the producer of this show. Okay. Mareva Minervi and I co produced the previous show. Okay. Um, and just to recap, this, uh, unfortunately, the French Festival is just over, but I was privileged enough to watch their performance on. Thursday was it? Friday evening. Thursday. Thursday. Thursday evening. And they only had one show because they had to deal with the whole group of um, babies and toddlers and, and mothers in tow. Uh, very pregnant out. women, everything. So it was a really beautiful performance and I want to share a little bit about that. Um, before we do that, let's introduce our other guest today. Yana, Yana, you want to introduce yourself? Hi everybody. My name is Yana. I'm originally from Prague, Czech Republic and I am a ballroom dancer. Oh, and I was absolutely excited to join a uh, Gwen and rest of the local dancers for our first show and the second show, so it was absolute blast. Yeah. So uh, this is Sky. Yes, this is Sky. Hi, Sky. You want to wait, everybody? Hi. And Sky was in the show, and Ezekiel was in the show. Yes. And you have an older son who was in the show as well. Yes. Yes. Eli was in the show as well. So let's go back to the first uh, ensemble performance. You want to talk a little bit? You're both part of that, and you're. Your babies were younger, and he wasn't even here yet. <laughs> well, how did that uh, come to be? Well, um, there were 13 dancers like in me? in Hawaii, in, well, in Honolulu area, who all were all pregnant at the same time. But we were all dancers in different genres, and I personally cross pollinate my dance thing quite a bit. So I started to notice, oh, Yana's pregnant in the ballroom community, and I'm pregnant, and there's somebody pregnant in the in the contact improv community, and there's. Um, there's someone what pregnant over here in the burlesque community, what and then we just all going? got together and um, <clears throat> we started we started daddy, to communicate. Daddy. And then Mareva Minervi had this My idea daddy. that she was going to get My all the daddy. pregnant dancers together and do this breastfeeding piece. And I said, "That's not a piece. That's a show. <laughs> and we should just do it as a show." Um, and then other people had ideas: what we, could we do with these babies on stage? Um, what could we do as dancers to show that we're still dancing? How could we be in a show? Um, and, and have our babies in rehearsal because that's what makes it convenient and possible you know, to do this extra thing that normally we would just do in our, in our extra time, but our extra right. time is full of babies now, so we have to bring our babies with us. And that's the thing. I mean, people think that when you have babies, everything stops. And if you were dancers before, that's it. That's the end of your career, and you can't blend dance with babies, and you proved that wrong. And let's talk about breastfeeding. Um, why is that such a taboo step? And why is it such a no-no to have a public display of it? What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I don't like What do you want? <laughs> oh, you want that. Okay. You want we'll get you a cookie cookies. later, okay? Promise. Okay? Yeah. Uh, well, we were just thinking it's part of the life, you know, and we, uh, as, as Gwen said, we knew each other before, and we were all dancers, and uh, we kind of all felt, well, yes, we want to breastfeed, but we have to go back on the stage or back on the competition, back on the teaching world, uh, and we have to take our babies with us, and we want to breastfeed. And that's how the whole issue started, breastfeeding on the public, breastfeeding in the car, how other people looking at us when we actually have to breastfeed. Uh, and uh, all the taboo and issues, I'm originally from, uh, from Europe, and I think uh, we have a lot of kids centers and a lot of places when women are able to breastfeed in the public, in the, in the airports, the special corners actually uh, created for women. Uh, 
and we we said, well, it's not here. It's not here. We, we what are we gonna really? do it? You so know? ironically, it's much more accepted in Europe, and here it's kind of a yes. I would have thought it would be quite open here, but you don't feel that sense. I think it's just different. Like in in Hawaii, um, you can breastfeed anywhere, but then do you feel comfortable breastfeeding anywhere? Right. You know, and. Um, I, I feel like I feel very comfortable breastfeeding most places, including on stage, which I did, but <laughs> both both shows. But um, I think it's sometimes you're in a situation, you're at a bus stop, and there's this skeevy guy looking at you, and you don't want to breastfeed there. Or one time, I was um, I was in a situation where there were suddenly all these all these women in veils right outside of East West Center, and and I was I was breastfeeding my younger son, and I I, I suddenly felt uncomfortable. I was like, this is counterproductive to, to their beliefs mm. for me to, you know, whip out my boob here and and feed my child, but then my child is screaming he's hungry. Right. So so how does um, his needs conflict with their Mommy. cultural norms? Like these women are not even showing their hair or their arms, you know, and then I'm gonna like pull out my boob. It just right. didn't seem like the right thing to do. So I staved him off and he was screaming. Um, so we had all these sorts of discussions in the first show, like um, just just Situations we encountered. Yeah, I mean, where do you think that comes from? This is it because men associate the breasts with sexuality, and so they can't really accept that this should be something um, publicly displayed or or, or or natural. I mean, they or is it something that okay? I don't want to see this because I don't want to associate my sexual desires with something that's not necessarily sexual at all, if anything. Do you think that's where it comes from? I don't think that people are just overall ready for it yet. Yeah, they see the nudity, and, and you are right, some people might feel that it's too sexual, some people just being bothered, they yeah. feel that you should do it in private, they don't want to look at it at all. Yeah. Uh, uh, they don't necessarily see the, the urge or necessity, like you have to do it for your baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And you know, it's just, and it, it's an ongoing process because breastfeeding is kind of like the first interruption in your life that disrupts uh, maybe oh, your here career. We go. <laughs> right now, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have to say that was the beauty of the show. Um, I want to bring up a photo of the audience um, because as an audience member, I realized how much this was so all encompassing that it was not just the performance on stage of the mothers performing with their babies and toddlers, it was the audience and the babies in the audience and the dad's holding the babies on standby for the audience and the screaming babies in the back outside and that was all part of the performance if you can take a look there's a photo um, of the audience yeah so you know the audience becomes the performers at the same time and it's really really interesting because you you think you have control you of framing something and yet the frame leaks into something else and then you have to include that you can't you can't have hard structures as a mother correct no you have to learn how to think beyond oh. everything oh yeah as a dancers i think we planned we had rehearsals right mm -hmm. we had scheduled but with child, you have to always adjust. <laughs> yeah. You have to be very flexible. You yeah. cannot go according to what your original plan and be yeah. prepared for it. And, and I don't understand why you said there's a long way to go, and actually I agree, because you know this whole kind of dominant structure that we live in still doesn't really respect the woman's world when it comes to motherhood and how that affects them and why, why, why we should accept that as being part of it, and it's not a bad thing. Like, we just had an interruption just now because um, when was... Uh, breastfeeding and you can't you you know you there are certain things that can't be shown or you can't um, talk about I don't yeah. know I mean but let's just uh, move on there is another part of the show that was quite sweet um, a mother-daughter dance mm -hmm. now this is brings it a little older so when the children are old enough to perform and interact with the mother um, in a very beautiful way um, what was the uh, his story behind that piece um, Sarah was not in the first show, but she uh, saw the show and, and liked it and um, wanted to be in the second show and proposed doing this um, fan number with her daughter, who's six. Uh -huh. six. She was really engaging. She was really special. I couldn't take my eyes off her. Um, but there was a beauty of that mother-daughter relationship uh, that happened mm -hmm. on stage and in the process of making that piece. So I think that's really um, interesting. Why don't we talk about the men? How did the the, men, the role of the husbands play in this whole process? 
Well, my husband is a dancer as well. Oh. So he understands the dance world. Uh -huh. uh, he could not attend the show because he was dancing and teaching himself in that moment. Yeah. Uh, but of course, he's very supportive. He's very supportive, and uh, we're looking forward to our child to dance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we try. Uh, Sky, do you want to be a dancer? Yeah. yeah, you like to dance? We started ballet already, oh, a little great. baby ballet. Yeah. yeah. So I have to say I'm very fortunate. He's very supportive. Yeah. Uh, but also we have no other choice. Sometimes I tell him because we have no grandparents or yeah. or any family support. Oh. Uh, so we, we we try really do it together. Wow, that's tough. Do you, do you have any cookies? <laughs> do you have a cookie for for, for Ezekiel? Yeah. You want to give him one? You want to try to give him one? Yeah. You want a cookie? Look, look. Yeah, so again, uh, mothers have to always juggle. And, and you know, we talk about the mess. And there was a part in where this one uh, lady came on with her child and talked, tried, kind of a stand-up comedy. What's her name? I'm Devaki. Yeah. Somebody, yeah, yeah. so she came on and talked about, like, the beauty of the mess, mm -hmm. of remembering things in her life that kind of got, like, all out of control because of um, her kid. And so how do we cope with things that make us out of control. Oh, because this is just <laughs> laugh and you just go with it. And I think you call to friends, you talk about it, we help yeah. each other if we need. Yeah. And you just have to be positive and and just breathe and let's go. Uh, uh, for me, uh, what helped like becoming a mother, uh, because before uh, we know as a ballroom dancer, very structured, yes. uh, very on time, you know, a lot of shows, very professional. And suddenly the child comes to your life and everything is turned upside down and I, can, <laughs> I cannot do yeah, what I wanted least. to do before. Uh, but somehow it made me find uh, the priorities in life huh. and what's really important. So I thought, okay, well, then I will be five minutes late to work, but I am with my child. I, I spend the... The, the great time what I have with, with her. Uh, so, and then you just, yeah, and then you laugh. And you, <laughs> and you hope that other people understand. It's not necessarily every time and true. <laughs> Sometimes you cry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, surreal tears. Yeah, so motherhood is a mixed bag. And, you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg for people. I have teens and I have way more problems. You think you're good. <laughs> just wait. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to celebrate, continue celebrating the mess, the beauty of the mess um, of motherhood. Uh, so don't go away. And we're going to talk more about things that we need to know about and talk about. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, Let's take healthy back. Aloha. Back on Quok Talk, I'm Crystal here talking about the mother load. Oh my, the mess. <laughs> and the interruptions and things that go upside down and you have to kind of continue with life and laugh it off. So we have here again uh, members of the Mom Ensemble, which was on the fringe uh, just this past weekend. Uh, we have Gwen and Yana and Ezekiel and Skye. Welcome back. Can I have a cookie? Thank you. Can I have one, please? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. That's another thing. I loved the piece where the two women played the babies, oh, the toddlers, when they fight over each other's things. They had blocks and like, mine. And so you cleverly flipped the lens and gave, um, gave weight to their world. And my favorite piece really was when you all brought on their kids one at a time and you watched what they did and they imitated, you imitated them. What stirred that piece? Um, that piece was the idea of Michelle Poplar. She really wanted to put it in the first show and it just didn't fit. And so we still wanted to do it. And um, the idea was just 
to do like a follow the leader and make the child be the center and make the child be in charge. And so even the soundtrack there was each yeah. child singing or talking. Um, and so we were able to just follow them and and um, kind of highlight them, spotlight on them for a moment and it was show brilliant. that their, their movement is valid. Absolutely. And interesting Not watch. just valid. It's interesting. And we oftentimes, as adults, kind of look down and say they don't know any better. We control them. And yet they have their own lives. And if we learn from them in different ways, it's actually very insightful. Um, it started off with the little girl um, doing flipping her purple dress, and then she got distracted by the lights. And the way you, you followed her and mimicked her, but it all became part of the dance, was just, it was beautiful. Yeah. Um, what have you learned from this process of being able to combine motherhood with your dance careers? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like a you. lot, a lot. Well, we, we've had we've had all these um, play dates that are rehearsals. Right. So we oh, yeah. we realize now that like we could be in a rehearsal and then suddenly my son goes swooping through and he takes the Pilates ball out from under me. I don't want to make sure. Can I make sure that I'm not going to be? Um, I'm not going to be flat on my back. <laughs> on the I think ground we enjoy the we enjoy the prepared. show, but I think we enjoy the process of creating it and the rehearsals even more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we met every week and we brought the kids and and then we were able to uh, mimic them and watch them, but uh, kind of uh, go through the rehearsal as I said before, and maybe not necessarily rehearse, but end up chatting what we done or during the day and what we need to do, or rehearse a little bit of peace, and then we clean the mess around the children. <laughs> uh, but I think it's it it's uh, it was really like a friendship and love and a creation and I really think that all of us we really do enjoy those rehearsals tremendously and yeah. then we are so happy that people enjoy the show yes. but for us it's already a gift that we were able to do it yeah. and, and, and share it and how did your husband support it. this process because in the in the show uh, one father came out and you guys made him clean up <laughs> but in a very endearing way and he was smiling all about it so what do you think I mean are some people are going to say oh this is an obvious reversal of roles you know what's your take on that um, oh no, the husbands, yeah. they need to do laundry too. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I, we are on very progressive households. They need to cook and help us and do the laundry. Yeah. And I think, well, mainly they were able to babysit and, and take care of the children when we need to go rehearse and dance without the children. So you think this is a learning process for them too, as you did this piece? Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. Yes. Yeah, my husband was backstage the whole time, both both pieces with a baby strapped to him. Yeah. You know, and then he just has to be ready with his cue to put, and he's not a dancer. <laughs> he's not a dancer. He's in the culinary field. So he had to like be ready to put the baby out on stage each time. And and it was really a reversal because he was standing next to me in the audience and he was on standby with the baby and the toddler. And being on standby as a man, some men don't feel they should be in that position. Yes. Right? Mm hmm and so, you know, what, what does that say about, about roles and, and equality or just, just the beauty of, of parenting together? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like there was a learning curve there. Yeah. And, and it was harder this time because we had a baby and a toddler. For yeah. him to do that before, he just had the baby. And my was son had separation any... anxiety. He was outside screaming with him. And Did he ever feel like he didn't want to be a part of this or it was like too much or... Like, I did any of the dads like, feel that way? Oh, fringe, when is it going to be over? <laughs> <laughs> it's extra, extra But then work. he loved it, too. He was really excited that he got to see more of it this time. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, as a European, originally with European uh, background, uh, and I have a mixed marriage. My husband is a born New Yorker. He's American. But I have to say I, I Europeanize him a little bit in that <laughs> accept because we're coming from very equal society. Uh, I have to say, for me, American way, uh, it's a little bit different because I don't feel like we are not equal. I feel very equal with my husband and my man. And since beginning when we met and we had a child together, uh, we split the roles. And so I'm very fortunate. Or, but of course, I'm applying the pressure on him too. Like, this is what you're going to do and we're going to do it together. But I hear what you're saying. And I think it's very common that the men feel that maybe women should do most of the work and they would like not to do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's still it, a very male-dominated world. Correct. No matter correct. How we cut it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but maybe in, in our household we try to share it more. But as I say, since we were talking about the culture a little bit before previously, yeah. uh, especially in the Central Europe, uh, the many uh, women worked, and I think it's very common for men to stay home with a child and actually take mm -hmm. care of the child. 
uh, so we are more equal in those roles. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I, and I think you brought out some very, very many different perspectives on this. Um, let's go back to the body. We talked about breastfeeding earlier, um, but the post-birth body, a lot of women can't really handle that new reality, and men can't either. It's like they don't know what, you know, their sexual desires and their, their kind of association with the woman's body. Let's talk about your personal experiences and how that affected you and your perspective on the body. Well, I think I danced all through pregnancy um, in full time. Wow. And it, it was fine because the pregnancy is this gradual, is this gradual growth yeah. of your stomach and you just kind of like rebalance all the time. Ah, interesting. But um, after birth, it was really hard to adjust because it was this sudden change and I was very top heavy and I wasn't used to having, you know, anything up here really to, to deal with weight wise, right? And it was, it was very hard to, to dance after that for, for a while. It took me months um, after both pregnancies to, to get back to like, okay, I can figure out my sense yeah. of balance is and um, dance effectively and then your joints are all loose from... Yeah, and the floppy skin. And the floppy skin, <laughs> right, right. And, and, Linda and the cool floppy, your boobs are great, that. but you know, later on they get floppier and floppier and you gotta deal with that new right, reality right. too. Yeah, yeah. So My stomach's like a map. I, I feel like we should celebrate that, the stretch marks, because that's the map yeah. of your life, right? Yeah. You should be celebrating these kind of markings of life. Yana, what's your experience? My experience similar like Gwen, I, I was teaching literally to the last day at the studio, so I was able, I was fortunate enough that the pregnancy went quite easy on the beginning and I was able to teach. Uh, I actually have to say that I was more bothered by being pregnant than later on not being pregnant because as a dancer being pregnant was bothering me in the motion, in the movement, huh. uh, so I was not able to work and, and teach and dance as I wanted to, even though, of course I enjoyed to being pregnant, don't get me wrong, right. but it was in my way. Ah. Uh, and then after the delivery, uh, it just takes some time, especially for the dancer, to get back to the flexibility or get the muscles back together yeah. and you have to work on it and then you feel the maybe pressure, at least in the ballroom world, uh, feel the pressure get back to the shape yeah. because mm -hmm. you need to put the costume back on right. and, and look the best you can. But that makes you work harder and it makes you a stronger person. You mm -hmm. think about that. Mm -hmm. This whole process of childbirth and motherhood just makes you such a resilient person. In our short minute left, do you have any some tips on motherhood and how they should embrace this process? Or oh, I think share? everybody should just enjoy it uh, because uh, it's, it's, it's a blessing, no matter what you feel on too. the beginning, if, if you are ready for it or not. I think when it's happened, you will take it one step a day at a time, okay. and, and please enjoy it, ladies. Enjoy the moments, right? En yeah. Enjoy it. It goes very fast. They grow from the little ones to bigger, and, and then it's gone. Yeah. Uh, Gwen? I think a lot of us have talked about um, making it an artistic opportunity oh. instead of saying, we need to step back because yeah. we're pregnant, or we need to step back because we've just had a child, or we need to step back because our baby needs us. We've said, oh, this is an artistic opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. And I'm going to leave it at that. The creativity of the mess. That's the beauty of motherhood and the mother load. Thank you so much for joining us today. And, and sorry for the mess, but it's important <laughs> life lessons. And thank you for joining us.